In this tutorial, what we're going to look at is how to add an entry to a glossary. Now, your instructor may or may not put a glossary into a course. It's their choice or prerogative. However, if they do, you'll know because this little icon right here, the one that looks like a book that's kind of open in the center, that is uh, a glossary icon. Okay, and what glossaries are, uh, it's a way to build and maintain course specific terminologies and meanings where you can enter in a term or a phrase and provide the definition and meaning to it. Okay, uh, and depending on the setting that the instructor gives it will determine what kind of functionality you as a student would have. Okay, so to add an entry to a glossary, you want to click on the glossary's name. That's going to drop you into a page that looks somewhat like this. Um, it will typically look like this. The only thing that may be different is that here you see there's a term already there, um, and yours there may not be because if you're one of the first ones to enter, uh, there wouldn't be a definition there. Okay. Um, what you want to do next to add a term, okay, is to click on Add a New Entry. Okay. Now when the, your screen refreshes, there's a couple areas that you're going to have to fill in. At the very top, the first area is co called or titled t concept. That's where the actual term or phrase appears. Okay. The next area is down here in this in this body. Uh, this is where the definition is applied. Okay. Now notice you have a full toolbar. Okay, which means that you can create hyperlinks. You can um, create hyperlinks by using this function. You can insert an image by using this function. You can spell check. Okay. You can change your font color, background color. Um, you can do quite a bit. You can embed video by toggling over to HTML, so you could potentially embed a video as your definition. Um, it gives you all the functionalities you need, okay? So in this space here provided is where you type in your definition. Okay, then you're going to scroll down, okay? Now this is all dependent upon your instructor. This section here is categories. If your instructor has no categories, this is empty. Okay? But here, for this example, we've set it up with categories. So if your instructor gave you um, directions that said, after you created your term, place it in the test category, what you would do is you would highlight the title of the category you to place it in. Okay? Keywords. Keywords are important because what these are, these allow people, um, other users, to come in and search. So for instance, this term we used uh, is student, and the definition is someone eager to learn. So for a keyword, I'm going to type in eager. Okay, so that way someone would be able to search my word and definition um, by searching the word eager. Okay, you could attach an image if you'd like right through here. Um, and the way, or a file, whether it be a Word document, Excel, PDF, um, and the way we do that is by clicking on Browse. And then what you have to do next is you have to go to your computer, uh, and from either the computer uh, C drive or your desktop, or if you have a, a USB drive that you've stuck in, you'll have to go and pull a file down. Okay. So for instance, I'm just going to grab this image right here. So I'm going to click on it. Okay, you see the name appears here next to file name. I'm going to click open. All right, now once I do that, that's going to take and transfer the file into this space here. Okay, as long as you see that space is now full uh, with the document, uh, you're good to go, okay? Down here, the auto linking, this will be determined on whether or not your instructor has set this up. Okay, but if they have, what this means is that now anywhere in the course, whether it's in a form or um, a wiki or a blog or on the initial interface of the page, 
um, the word student appears, it'll automatically be hyperlinked, and it'll be hyperlinked back to my definition. Okay, so by checking that, you create that. All right. Now these two boxes, is this entry case sensitive? That means that for it to hyperlink, does it have to have a capital S? Okay, well no it doesn't, so I'm not going to check that. And this is match whole words only. What this means is that, for instance, I have student. Well let's say you wanted to allow STU, so if, if stu appeared throughout the class, that would also link to students. Okay. Well, in this case, I do that. I want you to be able to automatically link if the full word student appears. So I'm going to check that. So it has to match the whole word. Okay. Now that the screen is refreshed, it's going to drop you back in and show you your definition. It's always going to take you back to the definition you just created. So you can see here, here's the term. Here's the definition, and you see all the space, so you could add quite a bit of meaning if needed. Okay, If you come here in the center, you'll see next to the idea of keywords is your tag phrase, okay, eager. All right, so that's a keyword that, and here's where the keyword comes, in, comes into play. Let's say you drop into the glossary, and you see this search box up here? If I were to type in the word eager and then click search, it would take me to this definition because that's a keyword associated with it. Okay, and if we scroll over here to the right, you'll see here's where your attachment appears. So people that um, see this definition are able to click on this and then see that image. Some other key points are down here in the bottom right hand corner. Okay, um, you see the edit icon right here? By clicking on that, you're able to go back and edit your definition. Okay, um, the little X right here, that makes you delete it. Okay, so by clicking on this, and Moodle will ask you, are you sure you want to permanently delete it? And if you say yes, it takes it away. Here, anytime you're looking in the glossary, and this is dependent upon the instructor, they have to create this setting. Anytime you're in a glossary and you see this, what looks like a little uh, kind of thought box that pops up, um, it's a way for you to add a comment to that definition. So if I were to click on this, the screen that comes in is going to be somewhat similar um, to what it is when you add the actual definition of term. You're going to see across the top the word and its definition and its keyword. Okay, and down here my comment uh, simple. And once I typed it in again, notice here you have a full box, so you um, have full control bar, so you could do various things with your comments as well. Uh, and then I can scroll down and hit save changes and now I've commented to that definition that meaning and so when you see this meaning now you see that um, your profile picture will appear, your name will appear, the date, time stamp will be on it, what your definition is and you are able to edit it or delete it at this point as well by using this icon to edit, the hand holding the pencil and this icon to delete from this view, the way to get back to the main glossary so you can continue adding terms or searching for other terms would be to um, either up here or down here, click on the term glossaries. Now that's going to always take you to this page, which right now there's only one glossary, but if there are multiple glossaries, you'll see the whole list of glossaries right here under the section titled name. And you'll click on the one that you need to get back to, and that'll bring you back to this initial page. Okay, now notice here, because right now across here, where you see all these letters, all is highlighted, okay, where it's in bold. That's because right now it's to show all the terms, okay. If you wanted to filter this and search by words with the letter B, that begin with the letter B, you'll see there are no entries here, okay. And the only words we have in right now begin with the letter S, so if I search by the letter S, you'll see we have the two terms, the original sample and then the one that we just added. Okay, so that's a way to kind of filter through terms. And you'll see over here, there's the image for the one we created and there's one comment for this one. And by clicking on here, it'll take you to the comment. Okay, so that you could read uh, and view what others have commented or if someone's commented on your post, what someone has said. You can always search by typing into the search box and clicking search a word. So if I was to type in sample and then click search 
You see how it highlights the word wherever it appears on the page and takes you directly to it. Okay. Um, we are currently in the tab here, Browse by Alphabet. That's why this appears across the top. Another way to browse is to browse by category. So this is a way to kind of filter through terms. So if I were to click on Browse by Category, this will bring us into, right now, we're viewing all categories. Okay? This is why you can see these terms, because they've been placed into a category. If I bring you over here, you see this menu right here? It's a drop-down menu. And it's always defaulted to all categories. But let's say I go to um, the example category. Well, now what you'll see is here at the top, you know you're an example, and there's only one term in here. Okay, so if your teacher or instructor has created categories and you need to search or you're looking for terms in particular categories, um, that, that's how you would go about it. Another one that you have as far as a filtering or searching process is to browse terms by date. So by clicking on browse by date, you have two um, that you can sort through chronologically. You have by last update, so the last time the term was updated. Um, so an edit was made to the meaning of the term or an entry um, had an edit made to it. Or by creation date. Either way, all the terms are, vi are then visible. Okay, and it's always going to give you the most recent. Um, so if you go by last update, you're going to get most recent. And by creation date, <coughs> okay, you're going to get um, a little different feel because creation date is going to take you from the first one that was created to the last one. Okay, so last update's most recent, and by creation date is the first one created to the last. And the last area or way that you can search is Browse by Author. So by clicking on that tab, this brings you into um, a list of everyone in the course, um, all your peers. Okay, And what you'll have here then is their profile picture, their name, and what definition they've put in. And you can see here, you can sort by surname, which would be last name, or in this case we're looking um, by first name. Okay, and notice this came back as well. So if you know um, the person's last name begins with H, you could click on H, and you'll see we have no entries because no one with the last name of H. Um, but we do have D for demo student. And because we're still searching by first name, and I click on D, it takes me to where demo student and their entry. Okay, so for instance, if I switch it to surname, okay, and notice it went back to all, so demo student, if I check by S, it then takes us here. So those are how you can filter through and be able to search other entries and what other students have done and your peers have done uh, and see meanings and terminology. Um, and these will appear, uh, but some of the other functions, as I noted, depend upon how you, your instructor sets uh, up the glossary. So if some of those don't appear, that would be why. Um, but if you have questions, I would always contact them and uh, double check. Okay, thank you.